All right, so this is clip seven. We'll finally find out what Lucy does. Lucy Hall, she won't join your rabble. I looked at my friends. My heart pounded and I could hardly speak. Mr. Smith? Yeah? Do you think I work at a lower price than I received before? It's fair pay, considering the hard times. All I have to say is... Okay, well, what he means by the hard times is when the Lowell factories first opened, or the factories in Lowell first opened, there were only a handful of them. Um, as time went on, more and more factories emerged, so increased competition meant a less share of the market, you know, less customers to go around, because they were splitting them up amongst more companies. All right, um, so uh, factories were making less money. The problem is, is um they put the entire financial burden on the backs of the workers all right the owners did not share in any of the financial burden in other words whatever they lost they tried to recoup or whatever whatever amount less they were making they tried to recoup it uh on the backs of the workers by cutting their salary and by 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 not reducing rent yeah i'd rather see you sitting beside satan pumping thunder three cents a clap I don't really know what that means. Uh, what, I, what I do know, I do know that it means she's going to turn out with her fellow workers. Good for you, Lucy! We'll show them! Twenty girls walked out of that weaving room right then and there. And I went too. Evelyn, the mill owners mustn't have their way. They say if they don't make up their losses, they won't be able to keep the mills open and provide us with work. Provide us with work. As if it was their charity to give, and ours to meekly accept. Remember, one of the arguments of the workers, besides the fact that they were daughters of free men, uh, believing that they were following in the footsteps of their grandfathers in the Revolutionary War, um, they believed, uh, and and a lot of people believe this, uh, that that this it's work that they're doing and they're getting paid for. It isn't a gift they're getting from the owner. Our answer. A procession right through town to explain our cause. All the girls joined in and none of us will answer the work bell till our wages are restored. Slaves, no more work in the mill. The oppressing hand of avarice would enslave us. These are exact words. And to gain their objective, the owners tell us gravely of the pressure of the times. This we are sensible of and deplore it. Good for if you. any are in want, the, the ladies will be compassionate it. and assist them. Oh. But we prefer to dispose of charities right with our today. own hands. <laughs> <laughs> and as we are free, we would remain in possession of what kind providence has bestowed upon us. Remember, their their major gripe was not really the con the the, the, the Tons of rules at the factory. Remember, they they that they wanted those rules, uh, but they knew it was there um, to keep their virtue, so to speak. What their problem was is they they felt that these this cut in pay uh, was going to um, take away their freedom uh, to come and go as they please, to leave factory work if they found something, if they found a husband or found a more quote genteel position like teaching. Um, and they felt that this lowering of the wages kept them trapped in the factory and that they were going to become like the, the, the uh, working class in England. And remain daughters of free men still. Yay! Most people in town, even our stern housekeeper, take our side. Some men jeered us, though, and my preacher was horrified that young women would parade in the streets. We are just following the example of our fathers and grandfathers, men who put down their plows and fought the British for this country. And we won't give up our independence, one at so high a cost, to some new aristocracy of mill owners and overseers. So in the minds of the workers, this, this rem remember the, the Lowell textile mills were this, the first example of what we now call a, a big business or maybe even a corporation, All right, but that didn't exist prior to the Lowell Mills. So it was these very wealthy uh, owners that were that were in absentia. They weren't there every day. Um, they were over in Boston. 
um, that had a lot of control over their lives and the ability to, to in, uh, try to enforce rules that would control their lives. Um, so to them, and, and there was this unelected, unaccountable power in their lives. So to them, it was a, a new aristocracy. My dear Evelyn, please make father understand. I mean to send you part of my wages just as soon as I can. I'm not coming back to the farm to live. And as for settling and marrying a farmer, I just won't. No old sure, no miracle, as Appleton claims. And the life of a mill girl is far from free of worries and depressing cares. So remember, uh, to try and overcome the fact that there was increased competition, uh, textile mills did things that made the working conditions a lot worse and nothing like what the recruiter mentioned to Lucy's father. All right. Uh, women were eventually put in charge of two or three or four machines. Um, they couldn't cover for each other if they were sick. Um, and there was, uh, it was very, very, um, fast pace. So they would, they would increase the pace of the machinery. All right. Um, and they developed this kind of bonus system, uh, for each of the, of the supervisors, the, the overseers, which they were called back the word boss didn't exist yet, um, over in the, in the United States. So there would be an overseer, two for each floor of the factories. All right. Um, the way the factory worked is they would production. The first step was on the top floor and they would finish their step and they would drop it down through a, a hole in the floor to the third floor, which would be the second step in the production process and so on until they got to the bottom. All right. And it would be just two rows of machines and the overseer would pace two overseers from either side would pace back and forth. All right. And they developed a bonus system whereby the, the overseers that had the, the highest production would receive bonuses. So it created this more cutthroat atmosphere among the overseers themselves to push the workers um, even harder. And so they put them in charge of more machines, they sped the machines up, and they developed this bonus system. So um, it became um, much different than what it was in the 1820s. So by the time we get to the 1840s, and this is very, very important, all right, um, Beginning in the late 1830s, early 1840s, um, the Irish began coming here uh, by the tens of hundreds of thousands, all right? Uh, ultimately, by the millions, all right? Um, in the 1830s and in the 1840s, all right? The mid-1840s, it was, it was to escape the potato famine, but before that, it was uh, to escape treatment by the English over in Ireland. Nevertheless, they settled up near, near Boston, near Lowell, and in the 1840s, uh, you begin to see the, the Irish female workers, uh, married or unmarried, replacing the Yankee farm girls. All right. Uh, and once that kind of transition became complete and you saw more, more Irish than Yankee farm girls, the boarding house system was pretty much jettisoned. All right. Um, the, the WASP, the, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestant owners of the Lowell Mills, the former slave traders, a lot of them, did not care about the so-called virtue of the Irish women, uh, so didn't care if they lived in a boarding house or not. So, for better or worse, that's what happened. My life here has opened doors I didn't even know existed a year ago. And for now, it is here that I want to stay. Eight hundred women joined the turnout, but within a week, the owners recruited women from the countryside and the strike was broken. All right, so the first strike was broken easily because um, not enough of the women turned out. So they were very quickly able to begin getting replacements from the countryside, from farms. Uh, and with middle of the week, um, the Yankee farm girls that went on strike, a lot of them had returned to their jobs. All right, so, so that was a regular strike. They walked out, they turned out. Two years later, the owners raised the price of food and lodging in the boarding houses. All right, so in 1835, they lowered the wages. In 1837, um, um, they increased the rent. All right, and this turnout was kind of different. It was a sit-down strike, which meant they sat down at their, um, at their machines. And what that did is it stopped the production process. And that's why it was, this one was successful, whereas the first one was not. This production did not stop. This time, however, the women were better prepared. And many more of them turned out this time. 
Many more joined the strike and whole rooms shut down, stopping work throughout the mills. Faced with such determination, the owners were forced to take back the increase. <laughs> 